So friends, the prosecutors in Donald Trump's criminal trial just filed something called Sandoval Notice. What's that? Well, it puts Donald Trump and his lawyers on notice of all of the other crimes and uncharged misconduct by Donald Trump that the prosecutors will cross-examine him on if Trump decides to take the stand and testify at trial. That's going to leave a mark. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. Well, friends, first of all, we've got a jury. We've got 12 of Donald Trump's peers, 12 ordinary citizens in the box, ready to sit in judgment of Donald Trump. And it didn't take nearly as long as some thought it might. In fact, Donald Trump said it will be impossible to pick a fair and impartial jury. And yet they did it in less than three trial days. But here's what I want to focus on today. The prosecutors just filed a notice with the court, with Judge Mershon, something called Sandoval Notice. We'll talk more about what Sandoval Notice is in a minute, but let's start with the new reporting, and then we're going to have a look at just a little bit of this new court filing. First, this from CBS News. Headline, prosecutors intend to bring up fraud, sexual abuse cases, if Trump testifies in his New York criminal trial. And that article begins, if former President Donald Trump chooses to testify in his New York criminal trial, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg says prosecutors want to question Trump about a host of his recent high-profile legal defeats to attack his credibility, according to a filing that was made public Wednesday. The list of misconduct includes the almost half-billion-dollar civil fraud judgment recently handed down in another New York court, a pair of unanimous civil federal jury verdicts finding him liable for defamation and sexual abuse of the writer E. Jean Carroll, gag order violations and sanctions for what a judge concluded was a frivolous bad-faith lawsuit against Hillary Clinton. That suit, which was dismissed in 2022, accused Clinton and others of conspiring to hurt Trump's 2016 presidential campaign by alleging he colluded with the Russian government. The notice is for what's called a Sandoval hearing, when a judge determines the permissible scope of cross-examination and whether a defendant's prior bad acts can be raised if the defendant chooses to testify. If Trump chooses not to testify, these topics are unlikely to be raised by prosecutors at trial. Okay, friends, so what exactly is Sandoval notice or a Sandoval hearing? Well, when a defendant chooses to testify, prosecutors can cross-examine the defendant not just on the charged crimes, right, the 34 felony counts in the indictment of falsifying business records to cover up the true nature of hush money payments to gain unfair advantage in the 2016 presidential election. Obviously, Trump could be cross-examined about all of that, but he can also be cross-examined about other crimes and other uncharged misconduct if the judge rules that those other crimes or that other uncharged misconduct is relevant to the defendant's credibility. And if so, the jurors get to hear about it and the prosecutors can cross-examine the defendant on those other crimes or other acts of uncharged misconduct, not something a defendant wants to have to suffer in the event he chooses to testify. So the prosecutors just filed Sandoval notice. And on Friday, the court will take up which of these 13 acts of other crimes or misconduct the prosecutors will be allowed to cross-examine Donald Trump on, and that will give Trump a, 
a fuller appreciation of whether he wants to testify or not. He's not going to testify. He's not going to take the stand. If his lips are moving, he's lying. And he's not a good liar. His lies are transparent. They're often childish. So he's not going to testify. But they still have to sort of lay the ground rules. They have to go through the Sandoval hearing, and the judge has to decide, okay, which of these 13 other bad acts will the prosecutors be permitted to cross-examine Trump on? By the way, where does the name Sandoval come from? Every jurisdiction has its own name for a similar hearing. In D.C., we call it the Boyd Inquiry, where a judge has to personally ask the defendant, inquire of the defendant whether he or she wants to testify or not testify at a trial. Um, the name comes from the leading appellate court case that first tackles the issue. So the defendant in that case was named Sandoval, so this hearing in New York is forever known as the Sandoval hearing. So I'm not going to read the whole three-page Sandoval notice that Alvin Bragg's prosecutors filed, but I just want to touch on some of these acts of misconduct that the prosecutors want to cross Don, uh, Donald Trump on. So first of all, it's in the case of the people of the state of New York against Donald Trump defendant, and it starts, the people, meaning the prosecutors, the people hereby disclose a list of all misconduct and criminal acts of the defendant not charged in the indictment, which the people, the prosecutors, intend to use at trial to impeach the credibility of defendant Trump pursuant to the New York state law. If the defendant chooses to testify, the people intend to inquire regarding the following. And here is just a flavor of what the prosecutors will ask Donald Trump about if he takes the stand and tries to testify in his own defense. The defendant repeatedly and persistently falsified business records, issued false financial statements, conspired to commit insurance fraud by fraudulently misstating the value of his assets for economic benefit, including the Trump Tower triplex, by overstating its square footage by nearly three times. The Seven Springs estate by valuing the property at up to 29 times the appraised value. 40 Wall Street by valuing the property at nearly $200 million more than its appraised value. A golf course in Aberdeen, Scotland by valuing the property as if the Trump Organization could build 2,500 year-round private residences when, in fact, they had permission to only build 500. That, my friends, is just one of the 13 instances of uncharged misconduct, because it's not charged in this case, that the prosecutors will cross-examine Donald Trump about. But there's so much more. They'll cross-examine him on the fact that the defendant testified untruthfully under oath and that a judge found that he testified untruthfully under oath in a prior proceeding. They'll question him about intentionally violating court orders and being fined $5,000, intentionally violating yet additional court orders and being charged and fined $10,000. They'll cross-examine him on committing repeated and persistent fraud in statements of financial condition in order to mislead financial institutions. They'll cross-examine him on the fact that a jury unanimously awarded E. Jean Carroll more than $83 million because Donald Trump defamed her and assaulted her and defamed her a second time. And here is the only one that I want to read in full because this is the one where Donald Trump tried to weaponize the court nefariously, improperly, abusing the court system to go after who? Hillary Clinton. They will cross-examine him on the fact that a court sanctioned Trump and ordered him to pay nearly a million dollars in fees for filing a frivolous bad faith lawsuit. The court in that case held, quote, here we are confronted with a lawsuit that should never have been filed, which was completely frivolous, both factually and legally, 
and which was brought in bad faith for an improper purpose. Mr. Trump is a prolific and sophisticated litigant who is repeatedly using the courts to seek revenge on political adversaries. He is the mastermind of strategic abuse of the judicial process, and he cannot be seen as a litigant blindly following the advice of a lawyer. He knew full well the impact of his actions. Can you imagine how that information will impact the jury as they go about assessing Donald Trump's credibility in the event he chooses to testify, hearing about those other court rulings from those other judges in those other cases, hearing about how Donald Trump defrauded and lied and violated court orders and abused the judicial system to try to go after his political opponents. Can you imagine how that will impact the jurors? I, for one, am rooting for Donald Trump to take the stand. Please, Donald, testify. Because then the jurors will get all this information and they will have a fully informed opinion about your lack of credibility. So friends, tomorrow, We'll be back here doing another video unpacking what happened during the Sandoval hearing and what else happens in court tomorrow as the case continues to move forward in the direction of accountability, in the direction of justice, because justice matters. Friends, as I am now going to try to remember to say from time to time, please hit subscribe. Subscribe to my Justice Matters YouTube channel. If you haven't already subscribed, it doesn't cost anything. It's always free, and I thank you. Please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.